Good evening and welcome to the Wednesday night edition of the walk through um, Holy Week with your pastors here at Northeast Presbyterian Church. My name is Pastor Eric and we're glad that you've tuned in tonight. We're going to be taking a look at chapter 13 of Mark's Gospel. Jesus is addressing his disciples. He's talking to them and he's, he's giving them some teaching about things that are to come. Jesus is on his way to the cross. He knows that. His disciples are expecting something big is going to happen, but I really think they're pretty clueless as to what is about to happen. They think something great and grand and glorious is on its way, and they have no concept that their Savior, that their Master, is about to die on a cross. But what Jesus wants to do is he wants to prepare his followers. Both those 12 disciples that were following him day in and day out for three years but he's also preparing us, his disciples, today. He wants them and he wants us to understand what the future holds. He wants us to be prepared. He wants to make sure that we have the right expectations of what life is going to be like as a follower of his. So if you'll turn with me in Matthew, I'm sorry, Mark chapter 13, if you'll turn in your Bibles, we're just going to read the first few verses, um, but I'm going to be covering pretty much most of the chapter. But God's word says this. And he, that is Jesus, came out of the temple. One of his disciples said to him, look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple. Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the signs when all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, See that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and they will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. These are but the beginning of the birth pains. But be on your guard, for they will deliver you over to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them. And the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations. And when they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but say whatever is given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against their parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. What we have here is the question that the disciples ask, when is the end going to happen? When will the temple be destroyed and something even better be built? And what are the signs that lead up to that? Well, as you have heard Pastor Josh preach this last Sunday, he addresses that when question. So I'm not going to address the when question, but I am going to address the how. The how question of how do we live in the midst of these difficulties, in the midst of receiving these signs that Jesus has given, the prophecies that were to be fulfilled just decades later, and the prophecies that are still enduring and being fulfilled today. The question that I'm going to ask is not so much the when, but again, the how. Jesus is giving a warning to his disciples. He is telling the disciples that there are some dangers ahead. And if we put our faith in the wrong things, we'll stumble and we'll fall. Jesus points out four areas in which he tells his disciples not to place their faith. 
He says, don't put it in outward signs of religion, like the temple. Don't put your faith in false messiahs, people that come along and say, I'm the Messiah, follow me. I'm the great teacher. I'm the son of God. Ignore them. Do not follow them. Jesus warns them to not be distracted by the worldly turmoil that's going on all about us. The circumstances of life, whether they be natural disasters like earthquakes or famines, or whether it's man-made destruction with wars and violence, don't be distracted by the things that are happening on around you. And lastly, his last warning, the last warning of spiritual dangers that he prepares them for is to not be tripped up by the unexpected severity of the persecution that is coming. Things will get hard for those early Christians. This is a lesson for this infant church, the church that we read the history of in the book of Acts. It's important for the disciples to know what is going to happen in the days, weeks, months, and years to come for them as a group of people that are leading this new church that is being developed. But it is as well a message for the timeless church. For us today, 2,000 years after Jesus spoke these words, because the truths remain true. As the disciples look back on this beautiful building, one of the marvels of the world, and saw the temple, and they just marveled and regaled and how great it was, Jesus knew that that beauty would fall. My question for you to consider, and when looking at this chapter, <clears throat> is what is your faith in? Do you put your faith in denominations or in churches or something as vain as church buildings? Do you put your faith in people, in leaders, whether they be true or false? There is not any earthly man that you should be following beside the Lord Jesus Christ. You should not be concerned about what's happening in our society, whether you are upset about the politics, about the wars that are going on in our society now, whether they are moral wars or whether it is the physical war going on in Ukraine and what may happen here in our country. The fear of that should not ever distract us from what we have our faith in and certainly not the persecution that we may be enduring now, but we certainly will endure in the future. The persecution that Christians throughout time and across this world have endured. The persecution ultimately that leads to death. We can't put our faith in our family. We can't put our faith in our possessions. We can't put our faith in buildings and homes. Our faith can only be in the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at some of the words that Jesus says when he's talking to his disciples. These are what we commonly call exhortations. These are the things that Jesus tells his disciples, regardless of what's going on around you. Pay attention to this. Do not be led astray. Do not be alarmed. Be on your guard. Do not be anxious, but endure. These are, there's negative sides, negative things that he says, don't be anxious, don't be alarmed, don't be surprised. But positively, he also says, be on your guard, be ready for it, be prepared for it. As Pastor Josh preached on Sunday, be vigilant, be watching for it. And lastly, endure. This comes from verse 13, a beautiful verse that gives us our theological concept of what we call the perseverance of the saints. It says, the one who endures to the end will be saved. That's not talking about being saved from death. It instead is talking about something much bigger, much grander, and much more important, your eternal life. These beautiful promises that are given to us are from the, word, from the lips of Jesus himself. His words were important to those disciples who were on the way to the cross, not knowing that they were heading to Calvary, but yet preparing them for that day and for the months and the years to follow. And what gives them hope 
I'll just draw your attention very briefly to the near the end of his statement, a passage that we haven't read, but is later on in the chapter. In verse 26, Jesus says this, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. This is the great reward for enduring, for being on guard, for not being anxious and not being alarmed or worried. But instead, what we get is to be gathered to be gathered by the good shepherd, the true shepherd who cares for his flock. And we know from the words of Jesus' own mouth in John chapter 14, where he goes to prepare a place for us, he promises that he will return to take us unto himself. Brothers and sisters, we have been told what to expect. We know what the future holds. We know that it is dangerous. We know that it will be hard. But we also know that we are given the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to guide our words. We are given Jesus to walk with us every step of the way. So my hope for you is that as you meditate tonight on these words from Jesus, on these promises, as we look at this chapter and we see much destruction and many things to be worried about, many of which were accomplished in A.D. 70 when the Jerusalem fell and the temple was destroyed but many are still yet to come. We should not be anxious, but instead return our gaze, place our faith on our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who will gather us to heaven. I hope that tomorrow night you will join us here in the sanctuary at the same time, 6 of 30 tomorrow night for our Maundy Thursday service. We will be um, observing the Lord's Supper together as the body of Christ. And we pray that you will be able to be here in person with us. My blessing is that you would be prosperous in your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and that you would grow and that you would walk with him. Thanks for being here tonight. Good night.